Good morning, and welcome to Wednesday's Word. We stepped outside today. It's not as bright as it was the other day, but I want you to see what's behind me. Do you see the tulips? They're vibrant in color. And I love tulips. I planted all kinds of tulips at our, at our house in Beaverton, tulips and daffodils, and they're vibrant for a while. Some on the back side of the house, they're kind of spindly. They, they curve around, and I think they just don't get enough sunlight where they're planted. Well, I want you to look at them, and if you studied them closely, you'd find imperfections. You'd find maybe where they got twisted as they were coming out. Maybe, uh, maybe they got a little bit of, uh, of struggle because of their environment. Well, the second thing I want you to see is a slide that I had Stephanie share with you. It's going to show a quote of Paul David Tripp. And this is what he says, True, humble, joyful, and perseverant love is not born out of raw duty, but out of worshipful gratitude. We love because he first loved us. And in his devotion, New Morning Mercies, for May 2nd, he, he talks about those four qualities, those four qualities about love. And, and the first one he uses is true. We long for a true love. But what does that mean? This is what he writes. He says, as I wrote the character qualities of real love, true, humble, joyful, and perseverant, that you see in this statement above, my heart was filled with a sadness of conviction. I thought my love often fails to be true. No, I don't mean true as contrasted with fake. I'm not thinking more of hypocritical. I'm going to act like I love you even though I don't love. True here means straight. Like the kind of arrow a marksman makes sure to pull out of his quiver. He wants a completely straight arrow so that when it leaves the bow, it won't veer off in the wrong direction. True here means consistent, reliable, and not apt to go in some unloving direction. Sadly, there is still inconsistency in my love. When someone disagrees with me, when someone gets in the way of my plan, when I get enforced, into an unexpected weight, or when someone gets what I think I deserve, it is very tempting for me to respond in a less than loving way. When I think about that, I think about the tulips. Oftentimes they come out and they go wonky for whatever reason. The petals are malformed, the stems aren't very straight, sometimes they're short and, squat and squatty, and sometimes they're too tall and they bend in the middle. You know, our love is going to be imperfect. So what does true love look like? That which is straight. Even when the winds blow against it, even when it's not reciprocal, how does it stay on course? How does it become consistent? Well, I want to look at two passages. The first one is from John, the 10th chapter, and it's about Jesus. It's the Good Shepherd chapter, and we talked about that on Sunday, but this is what it says near the end, after he talks about being the Good Shepherd. He says, if I, do, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I am in him. Therefore they sought again to seize him, but he escaped from their hand, and he went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was baptizing at first. And there he stayed. Then many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but all the things that John spoke of this man were true. And many believed in him there. You think about that, he said, even if you don't believe in me, and it was hard to believe that he was the Messiah, he wasn't the Messiah that many expected. He came humble, he came as a servant, he didn't come bossing around, but he cared for people. His love was consistent. It was what the Old Testament promised Messiah would be like. And when people saw his life, when they experienced his love, when they heard his words, 
They believe the truth. They believe what John said about him because Jesus' love was consistent. It was for the lost and the least and the less than. It was for you and me. It was the love that took him all the way to the cross where he gave his life for us. A love that was unconditional, love that would never fade nor fail, a love that went all the way for us. And friends, when we focus on that kind of love, it, it helps our love to get energized. Even when somebody maybe has been unloving or has misunderstood us or whatever it may be, even when we have messed up big time in love, we can come back and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Will you forgive me? It's a restorative kind of love. It's the kind of love Jesus has for you and me. The second passage I'm going to dig into next week, but I want to take a look for these four weeks, those four qualities of love that Paul David Tripp shares with us today. So let's think about a love that is true and where we fall short to bring it to the one who is the source of our love and helps us and fills us again to show that love to others. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for a love that is always true, that goes the extra mile, that loves us even when we are unlovable. But your love makes a difference. It touches our heart. It fills us again. And it guides us in your path of righteousness, that we may be instruments of your love to other people. And Lord, not a fake kind of love like the world might give, not just lip service, but love that is expressed in life, a life lived for you, a life that touches others. In Jesus' name, amen. One more thought. I want to share with you that in two weeks, on May 13th, we have something special. We have a men's prayer breakfast, and we're going to have wonderful food. We're going to have a study that's going to take us right into some NASCAR history with Ned Jarrett, and we're going to hear his story and how in all the races he rode in, he never rode alone. You're not alone either. Have a wonderful week.